Today we're going to be studying the differences between the flat earth dome model and the global sphere model and how it relates to the length of a day and time zones and as you can see behind me here I'm running right now a short video on the flat earth dome model and in this model the light which is just above the dome circulars, circles around the top of the dome illuminating a circular light area so see that circle of light you know, as it spins around, and it's illuminating about 25% of the surface of the planet at any point in time. As you notice, the circular light area, as it circles the globe, and I'm going to stop it right there, there's definitely a round illuminated area. And as this front edge crosses over continents and this light becomes visible, your sunrise will be right along the front curvature of this lighted area. And similarly, your sunset will be right along the back edge of this curved area. First we need to understand exactly how a sunrise and sunset works in both models. I have two sunsets to show you. This first one is a global earth sunset. As the sun goes down it disappears beyond the horizon due to the curvature of the surface of the earth. And the second one is a flat earth sunset where the sun just dis disappears due to going away from you at a certainly at a distance where you can just no longer see it. However it does not go down below the curvature of the earth. It just goes out of sight due to distance. I went to the internet and I found a flat earth map and I printed out a, a small copy of it for this demonstration. Next I've taken a funnel and a golf ball. Uh, the golf ball represents the light or sun as it spins around the top of the dome and the funnel represents the light that gets thrown down off of the funnel and how people would see it you know, on the surface of the flat earth. Now certainly this is out of proportion because the golf ball and the funnel you know, would probably be a little bit smaller in proportion to the map. What I, want, what I want to point out here is as the light comes down off of the sun and it comes down and it lands on the flat earth it will make a cone type of shape and someone's visibility on the west side of the cone would be the same as the visibility on the east side of the cone and the same for the south you know and the north. So effectively what's happening on the circular throw of light is on the front edge of it would be the sunrise and on the back edge of it would be the sunset and it's basically it's going to circle you know around the flat earth you know like this throwing the light down in that circular motion and you can see how it pivots right there you know on the north pole as you'll notice this circular lighted area it almost pivots right on the north pole so if the edge of the circle is almost touching the north pole as it kind of sweeps around and pivots there I've made a paper model now of the actual surface of the throw of the light, you know, as it would be seen from anywhere in the flat earth. And on my paper model, you know, here is the sun in the middle. And so on this front edge of the curve would be the sunrise. And on the back edge of the curve would be the sunset. And, and this thing would basically spin around the flat earth, you know, just above the dome, just like this. And being that the edges of this paper circle represent you know the sunrise and sunset let's take a look and see how that would actually look in real terms what i've done is on the front side of the throw of light which would be the sunrise i put a push pin right on this longitude line so effectively right there on that push pin they would be experiencing a sunrise and then i flipped over here on the back side of the throw of light and put another push pin right on the equator and this would be who would be experiencing the sunset so let's talk about observable facts that we all agree on okay first off these time zone lines, there are 24 of these as you circle around the globe or the flat earth model. And each of these time zone lines represent one hour the sun will travel over the top of the surface of either the globe or the flat earth. And the sun rotates 24 hours a day around the surface. We can conclude that this sphere of light on the flat earth model will cross over one of these time zones every hour. So from the front side of this throw of light to the back side of this throw of light would represent one day. And the distance between these two points of contact would also represent the length of the day. And if we count the number of time zones between the throw of light, we would come to the conclusion that we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one half. And we know that in reality, 
there are no places on the equator that have a seven and a half hour day. I've made another paper model and this one would be more in tune with what we observe around the globe where a day would last for 12 hours. So if this was actually the illuminated light area, you know, again, I've put the sun right here. Here's the sunrise and over here would be the sunset. And this model, in this model, this lighted area would circle the circumference, you know, the flat earth, you know, in this manner. And this would be more in line with what is observable on our earth today, where we would have 24 time zones about at any point in time 12 time zones would be in the dark and 12 time zones would be in the light as the sunrise line and the sunset line cross over the surface of the earth the problem with this model as you relate to the flat earth is coming back to our cone what we said is that somebody who is experiencing a sunrise or sunset based on the sun disappearing from their view or appearing to their view, it just wouldn't work with the way that the, we observe the actual lighted areas on our globe today. Because someone way over here on the far extreme southern hemisphere would have a lot further distance to look up to see the sun as it approaches than what someone in the northern hemisphere would have. So effectively, as the sunlight approaches, the sunrise approaches them, they would have this long distance to be able to see the sun as it approaches, whereas someone in the northern hemisphere would have this short distance to see the sun as it approaches. So the sunrise and sunset model of flat Earth, being that the sun or this light appears into your vision based on how far away it is, it wouldn't work. It doesn't line up. So as we apply reasonable logic, to this dome model, I think we can see that there's no way this would work in reality. So now let's take a look at a model that would give us 50% of the surface in the dark and 50% of the surface in the light as it relates to the surface of our Earth. Here's a model that represents 50% of the surface of the Earth being illuminated at one point in time. And also notice that the line of the shadow from top to bottom is pretty much straight, just like the half curved circle of the model that I showed you on the flat Earth. I think we can clearly see that this is what we're experiencing by observation. hate to say it, but brother, you've been deceived by people that have tried to make you believe the earth is flat. Many of these people have tried to use scriptures from the Holy Bible to try to support their position. While the Bible is absolutely accurate and there are no errors in the Bible, many times man's interpretation of scriptures can be inaccurate. And that's what the case of the flat earth is. While we know that God created the whole earth, and all that is in it. He created different languages that are verbal, and he's also created math. And math is one of God's perfect languages that is not subject to interpretation, because two plus two will always equal four, and there is no other answer. And in this example I've given you, I've used mathematics to show you that these distances are the same in both hemispheres. There is no other interpretation. The math is the fact, and it stands for the truth. So what should you do? The first thing you should do is to make sure that your walk with Jesus Christ is so rock solid that you will be able to stand strong next time the deceiver comes to you. I've got a clip following this that's going to show you just to double check to make sure that you're walking with him and after which rely on the Holy Spirit to give you discernment when the deceiver comes and tries to lead you astray. Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments, okay? One of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came. He took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. 
the whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you out there right now are thinking, hey, I'm a good person. For all the good deeds I've done, surely God would look favorable on me on Judgment Day and not send me to hell. But the Bible actually says that by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. If you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you are the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead. The believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.